Um, um, my, uh, my role here is to um, outline where we go from here as a movement, as an Anglican 1000 movement. And I want to go back to June, which just in this other room where many of you were, you heard, as I did, um, the new Archbishop of the Anglican Church in North America call for the planting of a thousand churches in five years. And uh, that just blew me away, and, and everyone felt the same way. In fact, if you remember, that was uh, the, the evening, and that was the comment that just erupted in applause. And I, uh, I called uh, the Archbishop um, a week or so later, and I said, are you serious? And he said, absolutely. I said, well, then we have a lot of work to do. And, and he suggested um, a group of people come together, which they came here at Christ Church, that was the September group. We call them the September group. And then from that, a smaller group of people that would meet every other week on a conference call to begin to plan everything that would come to this moment and then uh, beyond. But what we did here that evening in June is a certain trumpet, a, um, a call that resonated in the hearts of many, many people. And uh, if you were there, you heard it. Um, I have been trying to wrestle with it, whether it was actually accomplishable, uh, whether it was just a, a, a vision, or if it was a hallucination, or what, what it was that we were called to do, and then how it meant, what it meant for us as leaders to put it all together into something um, that the ACNA and all the jurisdictional uh, groupings uh, that were gathering under the ACNA umbrella, what it meant for them. The, uh, the best way I could describe it, what this call is, is a call along the lines of Nehemiah's calling. To think about the work of the church in North America particularly in this beautiful Anglican expression that we all love. But to think of it as having been broken down. Uh, we're all casualties, in essence, of that uh, breakdown. We are dusting ourselves off, and I think for the first time in a long, long time, um, it is, as Ed Stetzer says, it's in our rearview mirror. Uh, we are looking forward but I want to describe what we're looking forward to as essentially the rebuilding of the walls. That's the kind of passion that it's going to take. That's the kind of commitment. That's the kind of energy and resources. And everything that you know about in the book of Nehemiah is probably analogously true in our own life today as we look at this call. But I really didn't see how all the jurisdictions fit together because and I'll put it on the table, uh, as I did this morning, we're very different. You have organizations and jurisdictions and groupings that have not uh, worked together in peacetime, so to speak. They've worked together in wartime, and wartime makes strange bedfellows. But here we are look, charting a new course, and how do Anglo-Catholics and Evangelicals and Charismatics uh, and variations on all those three fit into this? How do the traditionalists and the, the young people g pull together on this? And, and how does the AMIA and the Forward in Faith and the Cana group and the ACNA and the Diocese and the Bolivia group and the Uganda, how do all that work? And I read as a discipline the book of Nehemiah a couple of times, and it came to me as I saw in the third chapter that what Nehemiah did in order to rebuild the walls is he started with the gates. He built the gates first. The walls later would connect the gates, and uh, the city would be blessed by many gates. And there would be lots of ways to come into the protected environment of the city, but every gate would have its own architecture, its own feel, its own nuances, its own flourishes, its own tradition, its own masonry, and, and everything else about that gate would make it unique. And if you've been to Jerusalem, you know this is exactly true. There isn't one gate that's like the other, but they all lead to the same, with it to the same city. 
And that helped me understand how the Anglican 1000 could really help resource every jurisdiction, every entity, every gathering movement uh, within the ACNA. Now, we were not here as Anglican 1000 to replace anybody, or really AC, uh, Anglican 1000 would never actually plant a single church. But we as an organization, as a movement, would help bring resources and fellowship and, and power to bear in all the various organizations within the ACNA. It would not occur to us in our leadership, our September group, would not occur to us to tell um, the Reformed Episcopal Church how to, where to plant churches. But it would occur to us to give the, the best and brightest thinking of the North American Anglicans and place it before them. It would not occur to us to tell uh, Jed Roseberry, Jed and Stacy, and the people at a restoration how they should or shouldn't do it. That would be between restoration, Anglican Church, and the bishop, their bishop within the, within the AMIA. And understanding that we were essentially about the gates and not about the connecting walls, we'll leave the walls to the leadership within the executive council and the executive committees and all the, the people that, uh, that work at, at a policy level, but at a church planting level, we could have a field day and we could have just a great joy uh, presenting and laying before uh, church planters and calling new church planters into this work um, in an exciting way. And that's what Anglican 1000 is. It's a way of looking at this, at the map of North America, and saying, all right, yeah, there are 130 million people. There are 700 Anglican ACNA churches, whether they're AMIA, Cana, whatever alphabet soup, as we've learned to call it, whatever that means. But how can we put the best practices in place, call the best people, create the movement that will supply church leaders and resources to reach the people symbolized by this map? And as we process in our own mind, we came up with this, this uh, notion that we would not be an organization, we would be a movement. A movement that, and a, and a movement moves, that's a whole idea of a movement. It's, it's moving, it is responding to the needs and the challenges uh, in front of it. Um, a movement has particular sets of criteria, and uh, the best way you can think of it is the early Christian movement. There's a movement recorded in the book of Acts. And uh, if you see that as a whole arc of the story, you know that the movement of, the, of God in the Acts of the Apostles was, number one, it grew at the edges. It didn't grow from a centralized government. It didn't grow from a, a, a round table of executives sitting somewhere and deciding how things should play themselves out. And I think we'll put here, this person there, and that person here, and this kind of church there. But leaders were empowered to go to the outer rings of the empire, so to speak, of the Christian world, and plant churches. And the disciples, the apostles, resource those people. So movements grow at the edges. They, they're in constant communication. We read about this in the book of Acts as well, where Paul, Barnabas, I mean, these people had incredible lines of communication, a fraction of which we know about in the epistles. But there was a lot of communication back and forth between the leaders, the churches, and the larger leaders, the larger-than-life leaders that we read about in the book of Acts. That's where, and I'll get to it in a moment, the, the central idea of having a killer 
and I use that word nicely, a killer website uh, came from. The idea of having this whole organization um, function essentially around a website. And I'll show you how we'll make that happen in just a moment. Uh, a movement that uplifts its heroes. Uh, the people that you have heard from today, the young people, the field report fellows, the, the, the Alan Hawkins and the Jed Roseberries and the, all the people that have stood up here kind of between the, the uh, plenary sessions, those people are the heroes of the ACNA. And it is our hope over the years to come that we can identify those people before they're heroes, train them, coach them, encourage them, and as they go out under their own initiative, sent by jurisdictions and by bishops, that we can make them heroes. We want you to know the people that are making the difference out there in the church planning world. We want you to pray for them. We want you to uplift them. We want you to invite them to talk to your churches. We want them to be the ones that have the spotlights. We want our, uh, we, uh, our movement, Anglican 1000, would like the ACNA to, to be known by its planters, not its bishops. Excuse me for that. We want the ACNA to be known as a missionary endeavor that, that has incredible planters that are committed to the gospel and bishops. You get the idea? So we think that uplifting, uh, as um, um, Ed Setzer said, you become what you celebrate. As we celebrate the work that these heroes do, that are out there in the field on the front lines. We think that that creates essentially a, a draw of many, many more people who want to be part of this. This is a God thing, and if he sees us taking care of and managing and, and loving uh, the people that are getting the work done, his principles out there in the field, I believe that he sends more principles. So we also know that a movement contextualizes, like the Acts of the, of the Apostles, it, the gospel, the, the message was contextualized. If you know that the message that Paul preached here, same truth, but the take on it, the order of things was a little bit different in Galatia than it was in Athens. And we need to know that a movement contextualizes its message without changing the message, the underlying truth. We all do that. We all know how important it is. And a movement also that would know its core tenets. And I would just recall to you what uh, the Archbishop said earlier, that our charism, the unique identifier for Anglicanism, was essentially these three things, this spirit-driven, scripture-driven, and of the Father, these three things pulled together, and word and sacrament. These, these things essentially identify what Anglicanism is. That's our core belief, our core tenets. And so this uh, movement would ensure, to the best of our ability, that. So there are a couple aspects of what you'll see in the next five years, God willing, um, God willing, uh, this is what you'll see. You'll see a website where content is king. Okay? What this means is that we will have many of you in the room and many others as writers and bloggers that can put up information and ideas and best practices that all of us in the church planting world will want to read and process, and at some level debate, not about politics, but about theology, about practice, about what works in a certain situation, what has worked here. Uh, watching Jed uh, having just a couple of months into his new church, watching him having to create out of whole cloth almost everything that he has needed. It's been a good experience for him, but there are many other 
churches that would love to get their hands on his set of bylaws or to understand how much does it really cost in your first six months of ministry. Why fly blind when we've had other people who have been re have recording instruments? So though all that stuff is going to be on the blog, on our website. I should also tell you that everything you've heard the last two days, including those incredible speeches by Doc Loomis or William Beasley, Ed Stetzer, we don't have a CD ministry or tape ministry up there that you can buy tapes and take home because they're all available for free on our website. So what you would do is you'd go to our website and click on the Ed Stetzer Part 1 talk and you would be able to listen to it. You'd be able to download it to your, your, your iPod, take it with you, share it with your leaders so that it becomes a resource for you. We're going to pile resources on you so that you can have a very uh, effective ministry. Uh, a, a website will have research and development. There's so much out there in the, in the world now about church planting. But we're not just going to put links up there. We're going to try and Anglicanize these things and help do the translation into the Anglican world. You may disagree with it, in which case we'd want your opinion back. We want an active blog. In fact, we have what is known as the trifecta of communication. We have a, a great website, we have a very active blog, and an e-newsletter that is coming out almost every other week. And you're, you're all part of that. And you're going to get this every week. We ask that you read it, forward it, respond to it, click, uh, uh, click on the links so that you are part of, of the web community. And stay in touch. Now, many of you, I was surprised how many of you don't know what an RSS is, but R, it's, an RSS is a little button that you can uh, click on so that whenever our website, excuse me, whenever your website is changed in any way, you get a little update. Here's what so-and-so has added. Here's a new statement by the Archbishop. Here's something that Doc Loomis just discovered as being an effective tool. We're going to try and put all that out for you because it's our website. Uh, we're going to do meetups. Now, this is a concept that we all can't afford to come to this conference, the conference like this, five times a year. But what we're going to try and do, in fact, we will do, is meet up at other conferences. We're going to piggyback on other conferences. It's not illegal. It's not immoral. I mean, come on. <laughs> just, just give me a break. But, for example, this new Wineskins conference is coming up, April 8, 9, 10, and 11. That's a worldwide missionary conference in the Anglican Church. Uh, many of us are going to be there. What if we knew that many of us were going to be there? We could pull aside maybe a little bit or m agree to meet up and... and uh, network and communicate and build relationships and friendships over, uh, over that, that conference. Uh, many of us will be attending in the Chicago area the NT Wright Conference at Wheaton College. Um, some will want to pull aside and get connected again. Other church planters that couldn't be here, other potential church planters, all, uh, maybe church planters outside of our communion, will be there and we'll get connected with them. All this will be done through the internet. You'll be able to know where we'll be and what we can do while we're there. And a big example is the Exponential Conference. Ed Stetzer um, made mention of this and we'll meet there. Um, in fact, I'm gonna ask you now, if, if it's in your budget, you can do this, to come to Orlando um, April 19, 20, 21, and 22, and go to this incredible conference on church planters. Um, as Stetzer said, it was a, a, the largest church uh, planter conference on the planet. Now, church planters speak a little, you know, grandiose, okay, but uh, this is a huge conference. A couple thousand people will be there. Be a number of Anglicans. People not in this room will be there. And through our website and through Facebook and through Twitter and all the others, we're going to try and meet up with people. Now, I've asked Tom Herrick if he would kind of champion this cause, and he already has a plan to take a bunch of people down there. 
and maybe a bunch more will show up. He's actually arranged so that if you go to his website, which is on our website, and register through his website at the Exponential Conference, you'll not only find out where we're going to meet, but you'll get a discount on the uh, tuition to, on the registration fee. Again, you go to his, it's, it's Titus um, Institute for Church Planning, or you can go to our website, find his there, and go to Exponential through his. It's all very You'll get it, okay? You'll get there. But the idea is that we're going to meet up. And if you have other things where young Anglicans, get this, if you have other conferences, seminars, where young Anglicans are either meeting for the theological reasons or church planters are meeting, you need to tell us what those are. And th many of you will just have pickup meetings wherever we are. We just, but we want to know what we're all going to go to, or as many as can go. A third thing that we'll have is peer-to-peer -peer learning. Um, we'll, uh, Anglican 1000 will develop um, a young planters community and a rector leader community. And, if, and I'm, I'm hoping I can get... Uh, and talk to some of the bishops on a peer-to-peer -peer level about church planting. Uh, what we're going to try and do as a resource to ACNA and all these jurisdictions is to create moments where people who are at the same age and stage in their ministry, they've been there for a couple of years or they're rector of a church and they, they're, they're about ready to plant a church, where they can meet up with other rectors, as an example, in similar situations, and they can learn from them, peer-to-peer -peer learning. We're doing the research on something this summer called the CPR, which is Church Planters Retreat. We would love to be able to invite all the church planters within two years of the plant and their spouses to the mountains for a period of two to three days just to pray, be with the Lord, network fellowship with one another, and get some fresh air. We think, I mean, I was a church planter. Um, my heart uh, would tell me that uh, something like this would have been exceedingly beneficial, beneficial for Fran and me when we started this church 25 years ago. We want to raise some money. Well, we know that this, there's, uh, but we want to help church planters raise money. This is a big deal. Funding your ministry, financing and funding. We know that a lot of church planters are going to have to get out there and ask people to fund their ministries. That is not an easy thing to do. And we'll create a moment at some point uh, through the year where we can gather all the church planters that want some help in funding and financing their ministry and teach them about the art of deputation. Help them to raise their own support or the support for their own ministry. And next year's summit, um, don't, I think, I hope it'll be here. We were so overwhelmed with the numbers, but I've got a plan to deal with that. Um, but I hope we can meet here. And we've been in, in conversations with some significant church plant leadership in around the country that will be, I cannot tell you the names yet, because if it doesn't happen, you'll be exceedingly disappointed. But we are already making plans for a summit for the next year the same quality of incredible speakers and kind of fellowship that you've heard uh, in the last two days. So there'll be a chances over the year, over the next five years, to really come to know each other as, as dear, devoted friends. And finally, um, development, and that means money. Um, a ACNA, uh, this is their initiative. I work on a volunteer level on behalf of Archbishop Bob Duncan. Our September group and our conference call group, we all work on a volunteer level on behalf of the ACNA. And right now, uh, Christ Church is kind of funding this out of, our, out of our restricted fund, but very soon the ACNA is going to pick up the staffing costs for this. It's not a lot of money. I don't even, I don't have a budget to, to place before you. But I would say this, that if you're a leader in a church, if you're a lay person with a checkbook, 
we need to talk, okay? Because, we don't, again, we don't need a lot of money, but this organization, a- Anglican 1000, needs to be owned by all of us, all of us, and we all need to pitch in. In the middle of your tables is a, a card and an envelope for you to take home with you. You can leave it here if you like, but you can tear it up and say, I don't want to be part of this, but I would really hope that you would say, I want to participate in this. This evening is not about fundraising. I don't want to get stuck on it, but I want you to know that we need, we need a, a high level of funding so that this organization is not undercapitalized uh, at any level. Finally, um, and, and you can take that, uh, if you will, and take it home with you. Uh, there will be plenty of options over the next couple of weeks through our e-newsletter to, to give. And uh, you can, or you can give it to one of our, um, you can leave it on the table. Just put, put a mark on the outside that tells us, tells us that you've filled it out. Leave it on the table and we'll take that and we'll um, be in correspondence with you about that. Finally, back to our website. Um, I want to give you a, a hope for the coming couple of years. Two years ago at the um, Anglican Mission Conference in uh, Jacksonville, this is three years ago, Leith Anderson was there. He said something at that conference in one of his talks that thrilled me. It spoke to me. In fact, when it was all over, I called the Anglican Mission office and I said, can you find the section of that tape where he spoke these words and write that down? I, th- I would love to see it. I know Bishop Murphy would love to see it. I think it's a great encouragement to the AMIA. And I want to read it to, to all of us because I think it's, a, it's an encouragement for the Anglican Church in North America. Leith Anderson, um, an incredible church leader, said this. He said, I'm a constant observer of American Christianity and the American churches. I lead the National Association of Evangelicals, which has over 60 million, excuse me, six, 60 member denominations and hundreds of parachurch ministries. And I am convinced that the Anglican Church has been blessed and positioned by God to do something extraordinary in America in the 21st century. He was speaking to the Anglican Mission, but I think if he were here, he would be glad to say to the Anglican Church. So let me read it in that regard. And I'm convinced that the Anglican Church in North America, all of its organizations beneath it, has been blessed and positioned by God to do something extraordinary in America in the 21st century. You're committed to the Bible as a standard of faith and practice. You adhere to Orthodox Christian faith. You are an amazing combination of tradition and tomorrow. You are under the authority of an archbishop and the Anglican Church in North America. You are directly connected to one of the greatest spiritual pipelines to a part of the world where God is doing something that has never been done in the history of Christianity, the kind of revival he's speaking now in Africa. That should give us great, great confidence that as we look at this huge mountain of opportunity called North America and the little tiny trail that we're going to blaze up it, which is a thousand churches in five years, it should give us great confidence that under God, this is doable. And it's doable because all of us will roll up our sleeves and be part of this movement, not an organization, but a movement called Anglican 1000. And to that end, I commit this summit and I commend your heart, and your hands to the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Friends, I, uh, we, w- we wouldn't be here, um, we wouldn't be gathered in this meeting if it weren't for David Rosebury and Christ Church Plano. And, um, you know, it, it's one thing when, when the Lord says a word and you say what the Lord has said, and that's what I did here exactly eight months less one day ago. Um, but it was David who called me um, in the short period that followed and said, so how are we going to do it? And I said, well, David, you probably know. <laughs> that, that's, that's, that's kind of your MO. <laughs> uh, uh, and I, again, let's just thank David and Christ Church. Thank you, Bob. Bless you.